This is the last video for section 5.1 and here we're going to look at a distance problem since we've just learned that we can find the distance traveled by looking at the area underneath a velocity function curve. So in this problem, we're told that a projectile's velocity is given by f of t equals 160 minus 9.8 t meters per second. How far does the projectile travel in the first three seconds of flight? Use three subintervals with left endpoints. What is the percentage error between this estimate and the actual value of 435.9 meters? Okay, so a couple things to break down here first. Um, we are given a velocity function. So velocity, you could say this is um, v of t or f of t since uh, they called it f in the problem here, 160 minus 9.8 t meters per second. Um, we want to find the distance traveled. So distance traveled, which is the area under the velocity curve area under v of t in the first three seconds of flight. So that's from the starting point in time, t equals zero to t equals three. Okay, and we want to use three sub intervals with left endpoints. All right, this word sub intervals, you're gonna see that from time to time in this chapter. Um, sub intervals is just a fancy way of saying number of rectangles here. So sub intervals is basically rectangles. It's the smaller things that your time interval in this case is being cut up into. So we're cutting up this time interval into sub intervals of our little different rectangles. So three rectangles with left endpoints. All right. So let's sketch this out first. We're going to make a very quick sketch here just to see what this looks like. T, uh, V of T. Our function here, 160 minus 9.8 T, that is a linear function. Our graph should just be a line. Uh, so the slope of this line, this is linear. And the slope is negative 9.8 and the y-intercept is 160. Okay, so from that, you can just make a really quick graph. Just say, oh, this is 160 and hey, our slope is negative. So it's a line and it does something like this. <laughs> okay. So there's your velocity function. And then we want to do three sub intervals for these first three seconds of flight. So zero, one, two, three. And we want to, yeah, cut that up into three rectangles. So each rectangle is gonna be one unit wide. That's pretty nice. And we want to use left endpoints. So for our first rectangle, for example, here, left endpoint, right endpoint, choose to work with that left endpoint to set the height. Okay, so you go up to F of zero and that sets the height for the first rectangle. Here's your second rectangle, left endpoint, right endpoint. So we're gonna work with t equals one to set the height. Okay. And then third rectangle, left endpoint, right endpoint. We end up not using this value at all, t equals three. We don't use it because that's a right endpoint and we want to work with the left endpoint of two to set the height. So with those left and right endpoint cases, uh, you'll end up 
kind of neglecting one value or the other on the end, uh, either like this side or that side. We end up never really using t equals three because it's on the right side of the, the interval there. Um, but yeah, those are our three rectangles. And so we're gonna estimate our distance traveled by finding the area of those three rectangles. That should give us an approximation. So our distance traveled here is gonna be the area under the curve. I'm gonna call this A sub L3 for left endpoints, three rectangles. And our first rectangle is one unit wide. Height is given by F of zero. Second rectangle is one unit wide. Height is given by F of one. And the third rectangle is one unit wide. Height is given by, oops, F of two. And that should be multiplied there because that's width times height. Okay. Now to find those function values, you would need to plug in zero, one, and two into our f of t function. So for instance, f of zero, that's a nice one, 160 minus 9.8 times zero. We already know that's gonna be 160. We could see that on the graph. <laughs> All right, but you would plug in your other points as well. And so we would get distance approximately equal to 160 plus F of one is 150.2 and F of two is 140.4. So this would add together to 450.6 meters for our estimates. Okay. So yeah, that is our estimation as for how far this projectile travels in three seconds. Now, that's all well and good, but let's check it out. Uh, what the percentage error is between this estimate and then we're given the actual value of 435.9 meters. So this is how far the thing actually went. This is how far we're estimating that it went based on our rectangle model here. So remember back, let's see, it's been a fair while now. I wanna say this is in, oh, section 3.9, I think, uh, looking at approximation errors. So percent error, we find by taking the approximation minus the actual value or actual, actual minus approximate. Um, either way actually works because you take the absolute value of that. <laughs> and then dividing by the actual value and then multiplying all of that by 100 to make a percentage. So let's take our approximation 450.6 minus the actual four. 435.9, okay, absolute value, even though it's gonna turn out positive, that's just how the formula looks. Okay, divide by the actual value, 435.9, multiply by 100, and we should get about 3.37. And so that's telling us that this is about a 3.37% error, which in the grand scheme of things is not too shabby. Uh, it's less than 5% error and we only use three rectangles. Um, so yeah, overall, not too bad. Um, we can see that we did definitely overestimate by using those particular three rectangles with the left endpoints. That was an overestimate, um, but only by 3.37%. Not too bad. Okay, so that wraps up section 5.1.